night was as black as a widower's suit when the call came in. Independence, Missouri. A sleepy town with more secrets than a confessional booth. I lit up a cigarette, the smoke curling around me like the tendrils of a ghost's embrace. I'm the kind of person who doesn't know when to quit. That's probably why I got into this business. My name's not important. I'm a private eye. March 19, 1960. That's when it all started. A ranch-style house, picture-perfect, like a Norman Rockwell painting, but with a dash of gunpowder to spice things up. Sharon Kinney, a dame with looks that could stop a bullet. She claimed her little girl Dana put a period at the end of James Kinney's life story. An accident, they said. But in my line of work, there are very few accidents. Most are disguised and carefully orchestrated ballets of deceit. Fast forward to April. Sharon's spending her dead husband's greenbacks like they're going out of style. The shiny new T-Bird and a side of adultery with the salesman, Walter Jones. Their affair was like a loaded gun, bound to go off sooner or later, and somebody's getting hurt. May rolled around, bringing with it more lies than the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Sharon claimed she was carrying Jones's bun in the oven, but he wasn't biting. Next thing you know, Jones's wife, Patricia, vanishes like a magician's assistant. And that's where I come in. I follow the breadcrumbs, each one leading me deeper into a forest of falsehoods. Patricia's last known whereabouts? A mysterious rendezvous with a woman who could have been Sharon Kinney's twin. Coincidence? Yeah. I have the same opinion of those as I do accidents. Real coincidences are as rare as an honest used car salesman who's willing to admit the baby's his. We eventually found Patricia's body. Six slugs had punched her ticket to the great beyond. That's when the cops finally wised up, slapping the cuffs on Sharon for a double feature, Patricia Jones and a rerun of James Kitty's accident. But Lady Justice moves slower than molasses when there's a bun in the oven, and Sharon walked free as a jaybird. June 61. It all went to court. Sharon beat the rap for Patricia's murder, leaving the jury so starstruck you'd think she was Marilyn Monroe. But James's case? That was stickier than flypaper. One conviction overturned. A mistrial. A hung jury. Sharon was slippier than an eel in olive oil. October 64, and our femme fatale decided Mexico was nice this time of year. She took off like a rabbit with Francis Pugliese in tow. But old habits die hard, and soon Francisco Parades Ordonez was taking a dirt nap, courtesy of Sharon's itchy trigger finger. The Mexican cops weren't buying what Sharon was selling. They threw the book at her. Hard. Ten years. Then thirteen. But La Pistolera wasn't done dancing. December 7, 69. A date that'll live in infamy for more reasons than one. Sharon Kinney somehow pulled a Houdini, vanishing like a vampire at sunrise. Some say she greased some palms. Others think her boyfriend played the knight in shining armor. Me? I don't know. The truth is always darker than the facts. Here I am now, still looking for a shadow that's been on the lam longer than some of my clients have been alive. Sharon Kinney, La Pistolera, the dame with more aliases than a spy novel. She's out there somewhere, probably sipping margaritas and laughing at the suckers still playing her game. But one day, mark my words, La Pistolera's luck will run out. I'll eventually track her down, with some good detective work and maybe a little luck. Until then, I'll keep burning the midnight oil. Like I said, I'm the kind of person who doesn't know when to quit. And that's probably why I got into this business.